Got the metering jets in. Welcome to Hack a Week. Yep, those metering jets arrived and it's time to put them into the cylinder head. Then we can get the camshaft on there and get it timed. Let's get started. One quick thing I've got to do before I go too much further with this, I've got to torque down the bolt for the alternator here on this side of the crankshaft. I've never checked the torque on that and it's a good idea to check it. It's 72 foot pounds so I've got this wedged right now with a big screwdriver against the bench so that the motor can't turn. I've got a split beam torque wrench on there. You'll hear it go click when it hits 72 foot pounds. So we're good to go there. Now we're gonna spin everything around and get at the other side where the advance unit goes on to the crankshaft, which will be right here. And we've gotta put in the stud that holds the advance unit in place. Here's the stud, it's got an O-ring right there. And this one is okay, it's still really squishy and I can feel some resistance on the O-ring when I put it in there. So just for a little bit of extra insurance, and why not, I'm gonna smear just a tiny bit of Honda Bond onto that O-ring. And then put it in there, just to give me a little extra seal. I take that and tighten it up. Got this double nutted. Got this set to eight foot pounds. Let's start out at eight. Okay, that's at eight foot pounds right now. I'm gonna call that good enough. Here's the advance unit. Uh, it's got some weights on it, and when those weights swing out under centrifugal force at certain RPMs, what it does is it rotates this cam, see if you can see that rotate a little bit as I do that, and that advances the timing. Now this one is for a 73. After 73 they look like this. They're a little bit different. You can see that this one is a little bit bigger looking and also the other big difference is the locator dowel on the back it's 180 degrees out of phase so if you put this on uh, from a later bike on a 73, you're gonna time everything completely 180 degrees out. So be sure you've got the right timing advance unit on your motorcycle. Now there are some things you can do where you can take this cam off and put it on an earlier one or vice versa and get some different timing curves. We may play with that later, but for now we're just gonna stick with the stock one. So make sure that that dowel pin lines up in the hole that's on the crankshaft we're going to put that on there, and there it is, it's lined up. This is the points and uh, timing plate that goes on here. We're going to leave that off for now. And what we're going to do is put on this special nut and a washer, and then the 6 millimeter nut that goes on there. We're only putting this on temporarily just to hold the timing unit in place, or the advance unit in place, so that we can set the cam timing. So I need to come up on number one cylinder top dead center, I'll take a long screwdriver and poke it down into the spark plug hole. And if I just hold that up and slowly rotate the engine, you'll see, see how it's coming up? That's, that's top dead center. Now if I go past that, the screwdriver starts to go back down. So let's come back up. So that should be just a little before top dead center right there. Now over here in the spark advance unit, see how it says T, F, and then it says 1, 4. That's cylinders number 1 and 4. The first mark here is the timing mark. F stands for where it fires. So let's... Uh, Let's see, we're gonna put that right there, right where it says T. And line it up with that little notch right there. That's exactly where we wanna be when we set the cam. Now we can focus on the top of the head again where we were a couple of weeks ago. Okay, 
We've got O-rings that need to go in here, but first we've got to put in those little oil metering valves. The metering valves drop into these holes right here, the ones closest into the timing chain. Let's put something in here so that we don't drop anything down into the crankcase. And we're going to check these, make sure there's no debris in them. We're going to drop them down in there. They should just fit and set flush with the top of the head. And now there's two O-rings that go around those. Let me get those out here. The O-rings drop in just like that, right around them. And something I picked up on uh, the SOC4 forum, it's pretty common to seal these up with just a tiniest, tiniest little bit of Honda Bond around the outside to make sure you don't get any oil leaks. If oil leaks around these, or for that matter, the ones out at the end, you're losing oil pressure, essentially. You're losing oil pressure to the top end, you're losing it to the, the uh, lower end, and that's not a good thing. So that little bit of Honda Bond around there is just uh, a little insurance to make sure that nothing leaks get just a little on the screwdriver we're just going to go around the outside edge there a little bit we don't want too much because you don't want to uh, have the oil metering valve be plugged up that would not be good now these outer ones here they're just as important because what happens is the oil comes in here, runs up through everything, and then it ends over here. And uh, there is a hole over here on that cam holder. So if oil can get out there, it's going to. So again, a little bit of Honda Bond on this is gonna be a good idea. Now we can put these rubber seals in here and all these holes that lead down into the head. Uh, they were for getting at the, the head bolts. The reason you want to seal these really well is because this whole area has oil flowing through it and it runs out here and here and goes back into the crankcase. And if these aren't sealed up well, well it can run down in here and end up coming out through the fins. So we don't want to have that. A little bit of Honda Bond on these too. Tiny, tiny bit. Try to be sparing with it. It's tricky because the stuff wants to just really come oozing out quick. So I'm gonna put a little bit on each one and then drop it in there and then we'll seal the top a little bit too. Okay, O-ring sealed, O-ring sealed, metering uh, jet is in there. Uh, all these O-rings are sealed up. These have a little bit of Honda Bond on the downside of them and I think I think that's all I'm gonna put on there some people say you should put some on the top but you know it's on the bottom it's sealing against there pretty well uh, when this cam holder goes on everything's gonna squish down so we're ready to put the cam holders on the alignment dowels are in place I'm gonna clean the bottom of these really well I already have cleaned them off with some parts cleaner nice and clean there everything else is clean the oil passageways right here and here are all opened up there's also some little squirter ones right there they're all good and free i checked them earlier sprayed a little bit of uh, parts cleaner through them now we can put this in place that's one this side looks good, nice and clean. So you can see how there's a hole there and there. That's why there's an O-ring at each end because the oil comes in here, flows through the gallery, and then it would flow out there, but there's nowhere for it to go. So the reason there's a hole there and there is so they could machine it and uh, get all these other holes in. So anywho. As always, any place where we have moving parts, we put the red assembly lube, 
put it into the cam journals here. And we're going to put just a little bit where the shafts that hold the rocker arms go, just to help them slide in a little bit easier. Now we're going to get the camshaft in there, so we're going to pull that rag out. I'm going to hold this up, get that tube out of the way, start the camshaft from that side. Remember the flange that holds the gear goes towards the left side of the engine. That's if you're sitting on the bike, that would be the left side of the engine. We we'll get the cam gear over here and the usual wiggle it around as we go. Work our way across past all those lobes. Now we'll set the cam down in there. Now we gotta get the chain and around the cam gear. Let's do that next. There we go. That should do it. Okay, the chain is on the gear. Now, the next thing we got to do is get the cam in the right position. Over on this end, there are two marks. See those two marks? They need to be flat, like that, so that they line up with the top of the cam holder. And the notch is pointing up. Now we've got to get the cam gear rotated around where it lines up with the holes on the flange. Right now, one of the holes is right here and the hole on the gear is over here, so I can rotate it that way a little easier just by picking up a link and just move it along, kind of like an inchworm. Takes a bit of patience, but if you just keep at it, you will get there eventually. So what I'm doing is I'm rotating the gear toward the front of the engine a little at a time. All right, let's check the cam one more time. Notch pointing up. Two lines are flat across the cam holder. And if we go down here and try to push this on, you can see right there by my thumbnail, you can see through that hole. It's lining up with the bolt hole. So now we need to just push this forward onto that flange and then we can get the bolts in. There it goes. And that is as close as it's going to get. It's not perfect, but I believe that we are there. Let's get some assembly lube on the camshaft where the journal caps are going to go on. No dirt on the camshaft holder caps. We'll get some assembly lube in them as well and put those in place. And remember, these are stamped with a uh, set of letters right here and they need to match up to the letters that are on the camshaft holder. Now we'll put the four washers. Careful not to drop anything down into the crankcase. Four washers and four nuts. And the four bolts. And we'll run those down finger tight. Next we just take them snug, snug only. Now the Honda service book, the old one that uh, goes with this bike, the one I've been showing you all the stuff out of, says to tighten them up to 6.5 to 9.4 foot-pounds. I love all this point stuff, like it really freaking matters, but all that really is is some numbers from the engineers. So let's just call it 6 to 9, and why would I want to tighten them up only to 6? But I'm going to start out with 6, and I'm just going to do a an X pattern.
And after I take them to six, I'm gonna come back and take them up to nine. Okay, the torque wrench set to nine foot pounds, which is 108 inch pounds. This is my inch pounds torque wrench. That's the last one. They're all at nine foot pounds. That part's done. Now we can put one of the uh, camshaft sprocket bolts in. I'm gonna put a paper towel here just so I don't accidentally drop this bolt down into the crankcase. I'm gonna put this in here and uh, I'm just going to give it a little snug with a wrench, just one of them. Now we're going to put the cam chain tensioner back on and uh, there's a gasket that goes on that. I'm going to put a little bit of my aviation Permatex gasket sealer on there, just a little. Also going to apply a little bit to the actual cam chain tensioner assembly, the spring. And I have a new gasket to go on there. Let's get that in place. And three 35 millimeter long, six millimeter bolts. I'll put those in. On this side, there's a 20 millimeter long bolt that goes in with a small lock nut. That's what locks the plunger in place after you make the adjustment. We'll get to that in a minute. So let's put this in. And when you first put this in, you might feel a bit of tension because it's gonna, a brand new chain is gonna be pretty tight. So don't be surprised if you can't push it all the way up to the cylinders. We're just gonna snug that up until it just hits the cylinders and then we will torque it down. Now we'll torque these three bolts to eight foot pounds. Take them all a little bit snug first. Okay, that's all set. Now we'll loosen up this bolt down here that was holding the plunger in place and just let it go slack. Let's take a look at the camshaft again. The lines running through the camshaft are parallel with the top of the camshaft holder and the notches at the top. Also, on number four cylinder, we're on the back side of the lobes. And all the way over here on number one cylinder, we are on the overlap side of the cam lobes. Now over here on the advance unit, you can see the mark there is still lined up on number one, top dead center, the two little white marks right there. And now what I'm gonna do is rotate the engine around uh, two complete revolutions. Any four stroke engine uh, you can do this with, if you go around two complete revolutions, you come back to where you started from. And we can just check to make sure everything is okay, nothing's gonna bind up, and it'll allow the cam chain to kind of stretch into position a little bit and let the cam tensioner plunger move into position. That's one rotation. And now we'll be coming back up on top dead center of the compression stroke of numbers one and four. And there's the mark right there. And if we come back up to the camshaft, you see the mark lines right back up. So we're good on the camshaft timing. So now what we can do is right here on the plunger, we can just tighten up that bolt and tighten up the lock nut against it. We'll get the bolt tight and then we'll tighten up the lock nut against it. Now once the engine is run for a little bit, we'll loosen that again and make sure that the chain can take up any of the slack that may have occurred on the first uh, first maybe 
20 minutes of run time, but we'll do that way later down the line. Time to put the rocker arm assemblies back on. Here's the rocker arm rod that runs through here. The holes are chamfered a little on one end. Make sure that points up. That helps you get the bolts started easier. There's also a slot on one end. We'll put that toward the outside. That will allow you to be able to rotate the thing around and line up those bolt holes. So let's get the first rocker arm up here. This goes right here. We'll double check that where it lines up. We'll put some assembly lube on the cam lobe. On both of those, in fact. And we're going to put a little bit of assembly lube inside that rocker arm. We'll put that in place, slide this over. And we're just going to keep moving that across. And we'll do the next one over here. You pretty much just repeat this process all the way across. Now I've got the adjusters over here backed off all the way. That'll just that'll help out just a little bit. Assembly lube on the cam lobes. Now you can see that this cam lobe right here is almost pointed up. And that's going to try to lift the valve as we assemble this. So what I can do is I can rotate the engine around a little and get that cam lobe on the flat side of its shoulder. Put a little more assembly lube there, a little bit in the rocker arm. And now we can drop that one into place. Now we've got uh, two bolts that go in there that hold the rocker arm in place. These are a couple of, uh, I believe these are five millimeter. And if you will just give this a little turn till they line up right, you'll feel it kind of drop into place to where you can spin them in by hand. And that's what you want. We'll tighten up these spindle bolts to six foot-pounds. Don't go any more than that. They're pretty tiny bolts. All right, now that all those are tight, we've got four more bolts that have to go in. And they go right here. Now those are going to get tightened up the same as these on the uh, camshaft holder caps. They're going to go to nine foot pounds as well. Now I'm going to check these again too because I've actually added to some of the tension with these guys, so these might go just a little more. Before I get to the valves, I'm going to put the last bolt in the camshaft sprocket and I'm going to rotate the engine around to where I can get at the other one. I'm going to put a little bit of red Loctite on this bolt. Let's tighten up the camshaft sprocket bolts. Uh, I've put some Loctite on those. I can't find a torque spec on them, but they're a pretty heavy duty bolt. They look to be hardened. I think they're actually like a seven millimeter. I'm gonna tighten these to 15 foot pounds with Loctite. I've got the other one in there and it's already got Loctite on it. And I'm gonna tighten that one to 15 foot pounds also. Okay, now we're ready to do some valve adjusting. Valve adjustment, first thing we do is we want to get number one cylinder back at top dead center on the T mark. And I can just watch the lobes on the camshaft. And this is the exhaust, this is the intake. So right now the exhaust is opening 
So that means that we're on the exhaust stroke and the lobe is coming up on the intake. So right now it's on the intake stroke. That means that the piston's going down on number one cylinder. And now it's working its way back up on the compression stroke. So as I rotate the engine, now I can look over here on the side and watch for my timing mark to come up. Timing mark is now at number one cylinder top dead center. I can adjust both of these tappets right now. Now if you go by the book, the book will tell you that you can also adjust all of these numbers that you see an O on. So you can do number one intake and exhaust. You can also do number two exhaust. You can do number three intake, but you can't do anything on number four and you can't do the intake on two and you can't do the exhaust on three. See how it's just kind of mirrored. Let's do number one. The clearances are uh, two thousandths on the intake side, three thousandths on the exhaust. You measure it between the tappet adjuster and the top of the valve stem. And let's see, that converts to intake side 0 0.05 millimeter, exhaust side 0 0.08 millimeter. So we're over here in the exhaust side, and the exhaust side is going to go to 0 0.08 millimeter or three thousandths. So we'll get the feeler gauge in there, hold it in place, and now I'm going to take a screwdriver and just slowly tighten down the adjuster. And it may bottom out on the nut because of an older adjustment. So what you do is you just hold the screw portion, back the nut off a bit, and we'll get the, uh, the feeler gauge back in there. And now what I do is just rotate the adjuster around. And what you want is where you can just barely slide the feeler gauge out. You should feel just a tiny bit of friction there. Now you take the, the nut and you just snug it down there. The feeler gauge should stay in there. And you can also use a longer blade screwdriver. Might make things a little bit easier. That one will fit. And take a wrench and as you hold that center adjuster, now you tighten up the nut and you just get a feel for it. You want, you know, probably about eight foot pounds of torque on that at the most. Just good and snug. Don't go crazy on that tightness on that. I've adjusted so many valves on cars and bikes where people have just tightened the hell out of that nut. It will kind of get a little tighter over time. Now you can just double check it again, put your feeler gauge back in and try to wiggle it. You shouldn't feel any play. If you feel a little play, do it over again. Take your time and get it right. After a while, you get a feel for doing this. So that takes care of the exhaust side, which goes to three thousandths of an inch or 0 0.08 millimeter. Now we can go over to the intake side and do the same thing. So we've got number one cylinder adjusted, exhaust and intake. Now we can do the number two exhaust remember the chart and it goes to three thousandths so we'll get the feeler gauge in there I've already backed off that nut just a little bit ahead of time bring the nut up snug make sure the feeler gauge still feels a little bit tight we'll get the wrench in place hold the center from turning and tighten it up now I can do the intake over here on number three because that's on the back side of the camshaft when we're at number one top dead center. Put the feeler gauge in. Two thousandths over on this side. Spin the nut down wrench in place. You just get a feel 
for where it's just bumping against that feeler gauge. Hold it steady. And tighten the nut. Perfect. Now we can rotate everything around till we have number four at top dead center. Last time we had number one at top dead center. So you pretty much just want to go 360 degrees. And then once you get to that point, I've already rotated it a little bit. Just to save a little time here. Now we're coming up on number four top dead center. And there we are. Now according to the chart, the ones that are marked X are the ones we can adjust now. That would be number four, both valves, number three, the exhaust, number two, the intake. So let's start over here with number four. We can do the exhaust on number three. And the last one we'll get is the intake on number two, and then we will be finished. That's it, that takes care of the valve train. We've got the valves adjusted, the rocker arms are all installed, everything's tight, the spindle bolts are tight, all the cam holder bolts have been tightened down, the sprocket is in place with both bolts loctited and tightened up, the valves all adjusted as I said, and that's it, we're gonna leave it like this for now. We're not gonna put the valve cover on yet because what I wanna do is continue to put all the other things on the engine and at some point I want to get the oil sump over here. I want to put some oil in. I'm going to put a starter on it and we're going to just spin it around for a while. Let some oil work through the system, make sure everything is oiling okay before I just go throwing the covers back on and assume that the oil is getting to the top end the way it should. But that about wraps it up for the valve train. Awesome! The engine's about 90% complete. Now it just uh, it's down to the external stuff. The oil filter and some side covers, maybe a few extra seals. I forgot to put in the final drive seal. Somebody mentioned this to me the other day in an email and said, oh, about your bike, but on my later F-Series bike, you have to put that in before you put the case halves together. At which point I ran out to the shop here, looked in the manual and at the engine and realized I'm okay. I can still put this in. It doesn't have a lip on it like they do later on the uh, F-Series bike, so that'll have to go in later. As I mentioned, I've got a few O-ring seals, things like that coming, and we'll keep buttoning this up. No valve cover, as I mentioned. I want to make sure that the oiling section and all that works well. We'll do that to a couple of projects down the line, I guess. But I'll get back on this at some point soon, but I think I'm going to switch over to the Sabre. That's an 85 motorcycle. Back in 1985, Honda was racing with the Rothmans livery. It's a uh, European cigarette brand. And the colors were blue, white, red, and gold, and the number plate was yellow. Pretty cool looking color scheme. Had blue on top of the tank, uh, black rims. Some of them had white rims, but I'll go with black rims. And then there's a gold pinstripe down the side at an angle. Uh, the VFRs were looked that way, like the 1000R. That's kind of got the paint job that I want. 1985, 1000R, go look that up. And uh, the Rothmans livery, I can get those stickers so I could put some Rothman stickers on it, put the nice big gold Honda wings on the side of the tank. The reason I want to do this is there's a bike show coming up up in Raleigh in April, um, actually the weekend before I get married, and uh, it's called Eurobike. So it'd be fun to have it done and drive it up there for Eurobike with the new paint job. So pretty soon, I think I'm going to be bringing that thing in here, take off the tank and the seat, sand it all down and start over. So that's where we're going. Also in the future, some more uh, electronics projects. Those are in the wings. We'll be getting back into some of that stuff. But for now, I'm pretty happy that this engine has come this far, especially since it was just a whole bunch of pieces and parts. And it was kind of a daunting task to look at, like, wow, am I really going to be able to figure all this out? Well with a little bit of patience and time, I certainly did. So, thanks for watching and thanks for the donations and until next time. Let's take a look at those marks again. See where the camshaft is? The lines running through it are parallel.